We share in your sadness, in mourning the loss of your father, your grandfather, great grandfather, great great grandfather, brother, brother in law, uncle, and my family's friend. We wish you God's grace during this time of your bereavement. And we hope that you may find the strength to move forward, grounded in the knowledge that Mr. Griffin's life was a life well lived. He found his calling and lived his life with color and passion. And in doing so, he touched the lives of many in St. Kitts, St. Martin, and around the world. We come here today to remember, celebrate, celebrate and pay tribute to an extraordinary, uniquely gifted person, Mr. Sinric Nathaniel Griffith. Having known and admired Mr. Griffith for as long as I can remember, I feel honored to have been asked to eulogize such an extraordinary person. While we all have different memories of and experiences with Mr. Griffith, I am sure that we all share the common memory of him as a portrait painter. For me, he is the first person I knew who was a painter, an artist. Little did I know as a little boy growing up, that I was privileged to be in the presence of an artistic genius. I shall therefore, in the next few minutes, paint you a portrait of Mr. Griffith, an authentic master artist. But before doing so, I shall read you his daughter Patricia's perspective or painting of her dad. He had a keen sense of humor, which he almost always added to our many conversations. When visiting with family and friends in New York, Daddy often told hilarious anecdotes of his parents and grandparents who helped shape his life and the consummate artist he became. He prided himself on his ability to tell a story, particularly through his art. He would often say, every person or object tells a story. It is my duty to bring it out. This was evident in his works. It was a privilege to have had the opportunity to observe his work and to see his creations which ranged from the, evolu which ranged from the evolution of a pencil drawing into a masterpiece to beautiful paintings in various, various mediums. When it came to the care and display of his artwork, Daddy was always meticulous and professional. He made sure each painting or drawing was professionally 
professionally matted and framed. According to Daddy, presentation is very important. Daddy's artwork was exhibited in many countries. Despite the worldwide reach of his work, Daddy remained a humble person in all that he did, even down to what he ate. His breakfast was simple. It consisted of toast, <coughs> egg, fried plantain, and a cup of tea. His humbleness did not stop him from being a dapper dresser. In fact, one might say his sharp dressing underscored his unassuming personality. Daddy was a gentleman to his core, and he will be witness his daughter, Patricia Massey. As I said, in the next few minutes, and I ask your indulgence, I shall paint you a portrait of Mr. Griffith, an authentic master artist. Cyril Nathaniel Griffith was born on January 1st, 1919 in St. Kitts to his young mother, Margaret Knight, and his father, Cedric Griffith. The Bible in 1 Peter tells us that we are all born with distinct talents and gifts. And it is through our talents and gifts that we can find our unique calling in life. Paraphrasing the words of Moses in Exodus, it is safe to say that on New Year's Day, 1919, the Lord bestowed the newly born Griffith with a unique gift, with wisdom, with understanding, with knowledge, and with all kinds of skills to artistically capture and immortalize everyday life with a brush pencil, paint, and a canvas. Born to a young mother, Griffith was raised by his grandmother, who earned a living as a baker for her family. Life for Griffith's family, like that of many of his contemporaries, was hard due to the depressed economic conditions at the time in St. Kitts. Griffith, by his own account, was a sickly child. You would not believe that. <laughs> it was during his early childhood that he discovered his unique talent and passion for painting. His surroundings, the Bible, and other books he read inspired him to paint, and paint he did. While other kids were busy playing sports like cricket or football, he fell, he fell head over heels for his first love and began making all kinds of sketches. To help bring in much needed money for his family, he started selling his paintings at the very
Hotel M. Connecting you. GEBE has been faithfully serving the communities of St. Martin, powering your home and our economy. Come rain or shine, our qualified team of professionals are working hard 24 hours a day to provide you and your family with safe, reliable electricity and water. We use the latest technologies and test our products daily to maintain the highest international standards. Our friendly staff is always there to assist you, whether in person, over the phone, or online. We are committed to constantly improving our products and services, making them more efficient, effective, and environmentally friendly to serve you better today and our next generation of clients tomorrow. GEBE, powering a brighter future. Our friend Mega Wadi is here with tips to save you energy. One, turn your air code temperature up. Two, use a ceiling fan instead. Three, buy energy saving products. Save some green with NVGEBE. Cola, what is the cola? The cola is the cost of living adjustment and it is for wages and salaries based on developments of the price index development of household consumption. This principle of adjusting wages and salaries to the increase of cost of living existed already in the time of the Netherlands Antilles. The price index figures calculated by the Bureau of Statistics determine the COLA percentage. This was regulated in the National Degree General Measures about the way to adjust wages to the price index development of household cons consumptions. We also had a period of time in the Netherlands and Delis that this COLA was even paid according to a TAPI system, which was a measure that was implemented in the time of austerity measures. After that, we had our normal reverse um, payments of the COLA to the wages, and this happened until 2012. So if we figure, good, this now we are going now into six years that the workers that are the ones that by law are entitled to the COLA, basically the cost of living adjustments to their salaries based on the price development have not received 1% much less 100% increase to their salaries. This may is also how annually on January the 1st the SFV publishes the adjusted pensions premiums percentage, premiums income limits, wage limits, and contribution to the social insurances based upon the inflation of the year before. It is also used to index the uh, minimum wage. Now, this is our conclusion, as and it's the reality. As Consumers Foundation, we must say, the St. Martin Medical Center is not a household, but an institution just like a company or a business, like any other company or any other business. For her employees, cost of living adjustment can be applied based on the, uh, on the before mentioned national decree, which is the Abbey 2013 GT number 694, dated the 3rd of May 2013. That is for the workers, but not for the St. Martin Medical Center that has to determine tariffs. So as the Consumer Coalition, we have checked with the Department of Statistics, the STAT, of the Ministry of Tourism, Economic Affairs, Transport, and Telecommunication. What was the price index development from 2004 to 2017? In, two, in December 2004, the consumer price index was 94.8. At the end of 2016, the CPI was 126.9, which means that for 2004, from 
2004 to 2016, the increase was 126.9 over 94.8 times 100%, which is 133.9% minus 100%, it comes to 33.9%. In December 2017, the, the, G, the CPI was 130, which means the increase of 130 over 94.8 times 100% is 137.1%. Minus 100%, it becomes 37.1%. Policy of the government to manage the increasing cost of health care by health care providers was not a 100% indexation, but a partial indexation of 60% of the total price index increase. St. Martin. My name is Stephanie Medina and I play football with the Walichi Roma soccer team. I have represented St. Martin in many different games. For example, the Dutch Caribbean Women Soccer Cup. I played against Bonaire, Aruba and Curacao right here in this stadium. Sports matter to me because it makes me happy, it keeps me fit and healthy and it is very fun. So I ask the business community to take on this challenge and will help us rebuild our facilities. And I also ask the community to nominate the local businesses in your area and take on the challenge and step up for sport. Why? Because sports matter. Check out the Department of Sport Facebook page for more information. Hashtag sports matter. Hashtag are you in? Hey ma, how you doing? You busy? I hear, just paying some bills, taking care of business, you know what it is? <laughs> I know, you're doing your online banking. I don't have to stand in those long lines to pay bills. I can transfer when I want, I can check my account wherever. It's like the bank open 24-7. I even hear checking the statement right now as we're talking. How's Miami? Well, that's why I'm calling. I'm finishing up a few songs now. But I'm afraid that studio time might be more than I thought. And I was wondering if I could get some help with some funds and I could pay you back as soon as I get back to St. Martin. Let me check my account. How much you need? I think 500 should be enough. I can transfer it to you while online. Direct from me to you. No problem. Great. Thank you so much, ma. I'll get online with Viv now. All right, darling. You know who you're for. <laughs> I need to know who you're for. Contact Wib today for your complete personal online banking experience. Available for all mobile devices. The Winwood Islands Bank. Now your online banking partner in progress. Who you're for?
It's been said that behind every door, possibility awaits. How much possibility depends on which door you open first. Every day, we help our customers discover the possibilities in their lives. It all starts with a conversation. Scotiabank. Discover what's possible. In my opinion, everything is perfect and you would be great for the job. But I see here that there's a two-year gap in your resume. What did you do? I was hospitalized for mental illness. Oh, mental illness? I've undergone treatment and I have a wonderful family that supports me. Well, that is good news. No, no, it's fine. I'm recovered. We'll contact you, okay? For a better understanding of mental health and what you can do to... But Minister Lee did not warn or correct the St. Martin Medical Center. St. Martin Medical Center management, in the second meeting that they had with the Consumer Coalition last year, January the 30th, informed us about a letter of Minister Lee on its way to the St. Martin Medical Center, in which Minister Lee approves the tariff increase as per January 2018. As Consumer Coalition, we have warned St. Martin Medical Center about this illegality for the second time. Consumer Coalition has asked to wait with the increase and to correct all the bills and to refund the consumers the illegal tariff increase, which was refused. So isn't Minister Lee, with his letter to the St. Martin Medical Center of January the 30th, approving and supporting St. Martin Medical Center to commit a criminal offense by approving the increasing of the St. Martin Medical Center tariffs with 41.8%, where he did not even start at that time the legal procedure to issue a national decree. Isn't Minister Lee committing a crime in supporting the St. Martin Medical Center to continue to violate the law and committing an economic offense or a crime violating the price ordinance isn't a violation a violation of Article 81 of our state arrangement of St. Martin by violating the existing national decree, including general measures that stipulated the prices for the medical center? Isn't it also in violation of Article 91 and 83 of the State Arrangement of St. Martin, which stipulates that new national decrees must be announced or published to go into effect? Is Minister Lee, according to Article 346 of the Criminal Code of St. Martin, punishable by law? When did Minister Lee, present the advisory bodies, the Social Economic Council, the Council of Public Health, the Council of Advice, a draft national decree to change the existing national decree. Was that before the letter to the St. Martin Medical Center of January the 30th, with the decision to approve the 41.8% tariff increase? Isn't this national decree the authority of the Minister of Theat? According to Article 1 and Article 7 of the Price Ordinance for Goods and Services. Isn't everyone, Simata Medical Center, SZV, private insurance companies, the uninsured residents and non-residents, aren't they all bound to pay the maximum tariffs decreed in the national decree? Isn't the national decree for the Samaritan Medical Center tariffs based upon the price ordinance? And so, isn't the Minister of VSR not the competent authority to issue this national decree for the Samaritan Medical Center? Or is he only to be consulted by the Minister of Tiat when there are no social medical nursing tariffs established? Why the Minister of Tiat until now did not stop the St. Martin Medical Center violation of the law. After having informed the St. Martin Medical Center management 
of the illegality of the tariff increase in two meetings with management. The St. Martin Consumer Coalition filed a complaint with and against the St. Martin Medical Center with the Inspectorate of Theat, based on complaints that we have received from consumers and the refusal from the St. Martin Medical Center to correct their bills or to refund the customers. The price control officers from the Inspectorate of Tiat visited the St. Martin Medical Center based upon Article 5 of the Price Ordinance. They got the new tariff list from the St. Martin Medical Center and asked for the national decree, which published these maximum tariffs for the St. Martin Medical Center. That list, the Saint Ma that decree, the St. Martin Medical Center could not provide. But they based their list based on the letter from Minister Lee of January 30th, 2018. Was Minister Lee authorized to decree a tariff increase by sending a letter to the St. Martin Medical Center announcing that he was starting the process to issue a new decree? Didn't Minister Lee have to inform St. Martin Medical Center to stop the illegal increase until the process to establish a national decree with new maximum tariffs has been finalized? Thank you.